So Juan, uh, we are uh, at your uh, head office in, uh, in, in Madrid, in, uh, in, in Spain. Uh, you're the CEO of Trading. Uh, for people who don't know what it is, uh, what, it, what is it? So Trading is like a standard for people's reputation, so that when you aggregate your, uh, look at your reputation from different marketplaces like Airbnb or Uber or eBay, etc., and you want to sign up on uh, you know, a new marketplace like Blablacar, uh, you don't have to start from zero, but you can start with all your credibility and your reputation from before. So that should reduce the, um, let's say, the social and the economic barriers to trade, especially between uh, between strangers. Okay, so 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 uh, it's a way where you can just uh, aggregate your your reputation data, uh, your 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 scores, and then use it uh, to implement in, in other platforms, and then that you can have much faster conversion uh, on the uh, platform. Absolutely, and also to leverage that data for, for things that you care about. I mean, I think that you know, trade is, is one option, uh, but the, you know, more recently we have been looking at how you can also leverage your reputation but for other things that matter, for example, uh, for insurance services, for uh, risk premiums, for credit services, uh, for finance. So it comes to a point where the reputation that you're gathering every day, it should, ha it should have an impact in how the world perceives you. Today, uh, we're only perceived by the world by how our um, credit score works in terms of like, are we using our credit card often or not? And there are many signals that are coming up in terms of um, like, oh, any of those new social signals uh, that were not used in the past that we can start to leverage today uh, for the benefit of the, of the actual user, right? Who has that reputation in today uh, you can argue that only the, the Facebooks and the Googles of this world are leveraging that identity for you, but maybe there's a way in which you could be the one leveraging your own identity. Yeah, so that uh, the end user will uh, be back in control. Absolutely, yeah, that's the whole idea. The whole idea is that the user is always in control, completely proactive, and you use your data when you want to use it. As I said, for the idea of the marketplaces, for the idea of trade with the strangers, but also for the idea of I want to ask for a mortgage, and at some point I might want to use my Airbnb reputation to get a, a cheaper mortgage, right? But it's yeah. up to me to decide how I want to use it. In the same way that uh, when I go to a, you know to an airport, I might want to show my platinum uh, visa card, and they let me into the lounge, right? It's up to me if I want to access certain certain services to use my reputation for that. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, reputation later on. First, about the company. Where did your idea came from? So the idea comes from a real uh, situation that happened in my life. So actually I had two situations. One of them was that I met a girl online and before we met for the first time she was uh, very concerned about who I was. Uh, so she checked me out everywhere. She checked me out on Google, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. She found my father because we shared the same name. And it was like a bit convoluted. And I was a bit frustrated by the fact that I could not prove to her that I was a good guy. And I was like, this, this should be much simpler. Uh, so that's one, and the other one was a negative uh, part, which was uh, that I actually got a scam on Gumtree, which is a British equivalent of uh, Craigslist. Um, there is no reputation system on Gumtree, and you know I bought a second-hand laptop, and the guy never delivered, and you know we went to court, and you know, you know bad things happened, and I lost a lot of money. And I was quite annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah, it was like five years ago, seven years ago, I don't know. Five to six. Yeah, I think it was 2011, 2010 or so. Okay, and then you had the idea, and then? And then I finished my MBA at the University of Chicago in 2012. And I you know, had spent some time traveling after the MBA, and I decided to start my own company. And, and I like this concept of helping people trust each other. And I got together with my one of my professors at the University of Chicago, who is a, is a you know well-known sociologist, and, and you know we discussed the idea of reputation and how uh, the reputation that we do uh, offline, how could we take it online? How could we take it to the to the online world? And that was kind of the starting point for for our algorithms, for our research. I got together with my co-founders, uh, Jose and Borja. Uh, Jose had a very interesting. Jose is a PhD in the in semantic analysis, and he had been working on algorithms to help uh, football players find other football players, amateur football players, uh, to play with. Because mm -hmm. when you play with people who are much better than you, 
uh, then you get bored. And when you play with people who are much worse than you, you also get bored. So he created some algorithms to measure the traits of people that play in football, and we discussed, could we use this for other traits, like reputational traits? And then we kind of, that's where things started. Okay, and then because uh, uh, none of you uh, uh, was a developer, uh, uh, I guess. Well, so a developer? Yeah, so, so, so uh, how did you start to make uh, the first version of the product? So actually, I'm an engineer by training, so I never developed, but I'm an engineer. Jose is a PhD in machine learning, and obviously he's also an engineer and, and a developer. And Borja is a full stack developer. So actually, we have a very strong technical background. Uh, I, I'm not technical these days, but I used to be. So, yeah, so, you know so at least I understand the concepts yeah. and really understand important, the language. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's, it's useful to to communicate with the whole team. We're a very technically driven company. Very, you know, we focus a lot on algorithms. We focus a lot on on research, on science, on making things right at the engineering level. And I think that, you know, I think it's useful that I can understand the way they speak and why things matter, uh, even though I'm, I don't write a single line of code and mm -hmm. hopefully nobody will let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be really bad for the product. Uh, uh, I would destroy everything. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, mm -hmm. so when something happens, uh, we can say, oh no, no, it's Juan, he was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that's the line of code that Juan wrote, And then, uh, because uh, then you were uh, with three of you, and, and, and how did you make your first step? Because you also uh, got some so investments. So very, very quickly, we, we went out to the to raise money from investors. I thought that this was an idea that would either work at vital level or would not work. Um, and we went out to raise money from investors. Uh, our first investors were Seedcamp, uh, who are based in London. Uh, you know, I traveled around the world a little bit. And then we got 500 startups in Silicon Valley. And then we also got some investors from Australia, from Hong Kong, from Germany, and uh, from Spain. And you know, it's a, right now we have a very, very uh, set of investors uh, who are helping us kind of make trade a global uh, trend or a global uh, impact. You know, we always say that we're a micro multinational. Uh, you know, we I I don't like products. I don't like to think that trade has to sell in one particular market or mm -hmm. that we have like customers in one particular market. I would like to think that reputation matters at the global scale, and, and I think that it makes a lot of sense when you think about credit scores that I mentioned earlier. Credit scores only work within borders. You, you are earning a lot of reputation with your credit score in your own country. Call it Germany, call it uh, England, call it the US. You move to a new country and you start from zero. That doesn't make any sense. You know, we should have a borderless reputation. And, yeah. and I think that that's where we can make an impact, where we can help make that transition faster. Yeah, so then, uh, then those people can really start working in different countries uh, really easily. So you also lower these thresholds. Mm -hmm. And how did you uh, uh, get your investors on board? Because uh, you were, uh, first you were with, with the three of you, you had a great idea, you got great skills, uh, but then you also have to convince the investors from different countries that your idea has potential. <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think that everybody, you know, I, most people I talk to like the concept. I think that everybody hopes that this would happen. Uh, you know, and what, and what I used to tell them was that uh, you know, this had to happen because when you think about Minority Report, it kind of happens, right? And there are so many kind of movies that tell you that this is going to happen in some way or another. Uh, and I told them, look, it might be Google, it might be Facebook, or it might be a small startup from Spain. And it's like, yeah, I mean, somebody has to do it, right? So why not these guys? And, and I think that that's kind of the, the, the way that we have gotten most of our investors. They believe in the vision, they believe in, in why we care about doing things. and. You know, the the, pro the market is very difficult uh, because mm, reputation is very intangible, something that is not easy to sell and to, to charge for and to, to become a sustainable business. Uh, but but conceptually, it's very powerful. And we hope, I think, there is an expectation that in 2025, uh, we will all have our reputations in such a way that I can see your reputation when you give me access to it so they can see that you're a good guy and that I can let you into my house or into my car safely right yeah 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 and also many people say okay reputation is is uh, is a new currency and i'm really surprised that there because there, uh, there are some other uh, startups uh, with the same uh, ideas but there are not many of them uh, so mm. so I'm, I'm i'm really surprised that's because yeah everybody knows the potential of it mm. but there are not many uh, players in the field uh, busy with it so uh, there are a few actually yeah uh, there are a few, few coming up uh, but not uh, many not many because no one i don't think that 
anyone has yet proven uh, the power of reputation. Um, is, it, is it also because uh, uh, many platforms they want to to really keep the reputation? Oh yeah, that's for so because it's 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 really hard to say okay, what is the validation of a platform? So they mm -hmm. want to have everything themselves, the reputation, uh, the software, uh, everything. There's no question about that. I mean, and I, we can discuss that at length. Uh, you know. Mm, the you know reputation is something that uh, most marketplaces and companies are keeping as part of their intellectual property or as part of their main uh, you know unique selling propositions and the reason why you would want to continue using Airbnb instead of using HomeAway because you already have your reputation in Airbnb. And um, however, when you think about it, that's in a perfect market in a perfect society that was completely trusted and safe. Uh, Airbnb would not have to leverage on reputation; they would have to leverage on uh, user experience, on liquidity of the market, on customer service, on many other things, on design, but not on the fact that, oh, but we have the reputation of the good people. It's like, look, in a perfect society, you will not have to leverage on that. And, and I, I don't think that that's a good, uh, you know, I don't think that it's, it's fair that people are, uh, like, kind of ring-fenced inside the service just because the reputation is in there. Uh, so I think that we have a, there's a social mission here to help people give them more opportunities and more choices, not just because they are like blocked into using certain services. Uh, so yeah, clearly a, a big challenge to, to work with uh, to, with companies uh, you know who believe that this is part of their of their unique selling proposition. But I think that they're becoming more and more open to to discussion. Uh, I think they are realizing what I just said, right? right? That the service and the user experience and design are more important. Than, than reputation that they should give that power to the user back. Yeah, and and and, uh, and also when uh, when there are some some alter, uh, alternatives, they also see that say people will, uh, will leave the platform because of that. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, and you know, I think I think that even today, you know, you can see that from new users. When you're a new user, you have no reputation on either platform. And which platform do you use? Do you, you use the platform that has the most liquidity, better design, better customer service, etc. Right? And there are many options already. So I think that. Uh, over time, that will happen as well for all their customers. Yeah. And we'll see, right? Yeah. There is also something that I, I like to talk about, uh, which is the um, what they call the um, the offline to online reputation, uh, which is basically people like my mother, right? My mother has no reputation. She has never used Airbnb. She has never used eBay. She has she has no Twitter followers. She has Facebook, but like, what are Facebook friends, right? That doesn't really mean reputation in any way. Um, but uh, she is part of a society and part of a community and there are people like myself whom I might have an online reputation and there are ways in which I could support her or I could be vouching for her in ways that allow her to get into the economic graph or into these economic opportunities. When you think about how this could inundate the world, it enables people who are completely out of the social or, or out of the economic uh, online graph and bring them inside, right? And I think that that's, that's something that cannot be done by a company like a marketplace by itself. It has to be done at the platform level, yeah. and and that's kind of some of the things that we think that makes sense will make sense over the long term, and that uh, you know that's how we will hopefully leverage our reputation platforms and for to enable those people who today don't have an easy access to them. Yeah, yeah, but I think also the the possibility there and uh, I I also interviewed uh, at the process the week uh, in Brussels a guy from uh, Singa. It's a Uber, but then for uh, auto rickshaws and the problem in, uh, in, in India. And the problem over there is, okay, people don't have a, a uh, online or, or, or a, a reputation at the government. Uh, so ah, when yeah. they are going to uh, 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 enter a, a new drive on a platform, they, 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 they have to talk to their neighbors, to their family, and that's their way to see, okay, can, can we trust this person? Completely agree. I mean, and I think that this is also, you can also see this from the idea of the uh, what Mohammed Jonas did in Bangladesh, giving microcredits to women, uh, women with, in many cases, no clear identity or common identity, uh, and bank and under ba or under bank, uh, and in many cases, no collateral and no like no way to prove that they could return this this credit. But what they used as collateral was the their social network, right? Their friends, and not social network from the point of view of Facebook. I'm really talking about their friends, the community, the neighbors. Those are the people who prove your identity, they prove your reputation, and and that's what we call uh, the network of trust. 
And I think that when we speak about reputation, sometimes we think about the reputation of Martin, the reputation of one person. Actually, reputation is much wider than that. Reputation is, you have to look at it at the level of network. And the fact that I, you know, I am here because somebody recommended you to come to this office and talk to me before you had ever met, to, uh, met me, right? So reputation comes through a third party in most cases. How can we leverage the power of, of the network as opposed to the power of, one, of the reputation of one person? This creates uh, very interesting behaviors. Um, for example, uh, when you think about the Amish in Philadelphia, uh, they don't have insurance uh, by, by religion or by faith. They decide not to have insurance. Uh, they're not allowed to have insurance. However, they have what you could call a post-insurance whereby if one of the people in the community gets ill, everyone has to put money. Like, ap afterwards. Not, not in advance. Afterwards. Of course, some people could slack off and like, you know, not pay and forget to pay or whatever. Nobody does that. Everybody pays for that post-insurance. And the reason for that is they have a tremendous pressure to continue to be part of that community. Because if they don't, they will be completely eliminated from the community. They will not belong to the community yeah. anymore. So when you think about the reputation of a network, it's much more powerful and more resilient than the reputation of one single person. But uh, don't you, uh, then, uh, then also answer is yes, that people are uh, that networks uh, will, uh, will be peers, uh, people of the same same education, uh, the, uh, uh, the same race, and that then also the less strong networks uh, will have problems with that. Good. That's a very good point. That's actually a very good point. Um, in principle, you, you have to think about it from the idiosyncratic point of view of the risk of one person to get compared to the risk of many people, even if those many people have similar characteristics in terms of socioeconomic uh, levels. And now, go back to the example I just gave you about Mohammed Yunus. The neighbors were also women with no identity, no reputation, no collateral, but those were the collateral. You see, they collateralized each other. In a way, even, even though each of them, one by one, were impossible to bank. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of it is that the network of trust, what it enables is everyone to rise. It decreases the, the default rates, it increases the peer pressure, it enables people to go beyond where they would have been individually. Yeah. And that's the, the most of the work we do at Treaty has to do with networks as opposed to reputation of one single person. Now, the most visual part is maybe we do semantic analysis of Airbnb reviews, for you and blah blah blah, but the reality is that most of what we do has more to do with the network than with the individual person. Yeah, yeah, but I think then uh, you also got a, 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 a much better trust uh, score because in the end, like with Airbnb, like when I rent your apartment, uh, then we both have benefit of a good review. So we always say, oh, hey, hey that guy. Uh, D yes and no, it depends. Um, it happens, for example, in networks like LinkedIn because on LinkedIn you have a long-term relationship with somebody, so you have an incentive to give positive reviews. Uh, on, a re on reviews like Airbnb, you have no, there is no reason to give a positive review. If you didn't like something, you will say it, uh, because there is no long-term gains. Uh, there is no reason to continue to deal with, uh, with this person. Um, you know, when you think about it from the game theory point of view, you can very quickly see that some games are long-term, some games are, are short-term. Uh, short-term games typically provide better reputation systems. Uh, Long-term games are the reason why people behave. So, for example, um, that's the reason why in hotels you might leave the bed undone or unmade, uh, but in Airbnb you usually make the bed more clean because you want the long term. Not with this particular person, but for the game. You want to continue participating in Airbnb. So yeah. that's kind of, yeah. you know, game theory is a very interesting uh, you know, matter of, of work in, in the sharing economy and how we're behaving differently thanks to that reputation, those reputation systems. Yeah, but do you think this also really it depends on the culture you're in? Uh, because like in like, like in Netherlands, we're really bad at giving feedback. Yeah. Uh, I, I interviewed with you guys from uh, Helpling, it's a cleaner platform. I see. And I said, okay, but what is the benefits? Uh, because uh, with, uh, with the first hire, okay, then you bring together demand and supply. But the second time, you can also call the cleaner and say, okay, come back again. And then you say, okay, but one of the things that people, uh, or, or, or one of the things that he was thinking of people were, stick to the platform, uh, also the second time and the, you know, the, 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 the next time was that in the end people they have really much problems with giving mm -hmm. feedback, yeah. uh, so many people are not satisfied uh, about their cleaner, Yeah. Uh, but they're just not uh, yeah, the good in saying, okay, uh, you, uh, you're fired or, or, or you're bad, and now by using the platform they can say, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy, bye-bye. Yeah, 
the, the, I think that there are two questions here. One of them has to do with uh, the idea of whether different cultures give ratings differently, and here we completely agree, we have the data to prove it. Uh, some cultures, like in Northern uh, Europe, they give much worse scores than anywhere else in the world, really. Uh, so you have to be a really good Uber driver to get five stars. Uh, whereas in other parts of the world, five so in the US, for example, five stars is the norm. Like people give five stars to each other yeah. all the time. It's, it's the norm. It's, that's normal. Uh, but in Russia, for example, you have to give you, you know, have to give you drinks and sweets and Wi-Fi in the car to get, for you to get five stars, right? And and but you can fix that by adjusting reputation by the culture. And you can just look at the histogram and rate the rater. So if I'm somebody who typically gives three stars on average, mm. uh, and I give a five star to somebody, that person is amazing, right? And if somebody who always gives five stars gives three stars to somebody, that person is really bad. Yeah. So you have to rate yeah. reputation for the rater. Yeah. So that's what we call rate the rater. We yeah. have algorithms for that. Um, the second question that you were discussing was the idea of uh, long-term games, like in the case of Helplink or Homejoy. Homejoy closed recently, as you know. Uh, and the reason they mentioned as uh, one of their main challenges was to retain customers and retain suppliers, just because you know people would find each other. Oh, you're good. You know, let's save the 20% from Homejoy. Let's just do this on on our on the side. Um, and that you know, that clearly happens uh, in in many transactions where you continue to operate with the same person. You gain trust with that person. Uh, it doesn't happen with U Uber. Why? Well, because I need a different Uber every single time. Yeah. It doesn't happen with Airbnb because I travel to different places every single time, right? There are some services where it, where the recurrency and the lo and the location makes a lot of sense to to continue to use a platform. Mm -hmm. There are some services that that the recurrency happens so locally that you end up using the same people, and then it loses kind of the the marketplace loses the value. Um, there are some uh, services that are going to insurance to, to um, as a way to to keep the customer. So, for example, uh, you know, in companies, babysitter companies, mm -hmm. is al almost everything is about insurance. Yeah. Because same, you know, uh, the same like with, with car sharing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but I really believe this is just a, a, a temporary thing because uh, I also talked to some some insurance uh, insurers. And they really had quite some troubles uh, with car sharing insurance because normally, like in Netherlands, we've got two kind of car insurance. We, we've got all risk. So when I hit your car, both both uh, damages are being uh, refunded, uh, and we got the basic. So when I hit your car, yeah. then your damage is is, is fixed. Yes. Uh, but like when I have the basic insurance and and I have damage, I say, hey, hey uh, Juan, do you want to uh, rent my car? We're using the platform for one day, so one day is insured, mm -hmm. and then okay. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, uh, then you smash my car, and then it's f uh, 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 always insured. So that's a really big, uh, so in the end, it's much simpler for them just to add the uh, car sharing insurance in the basic insurance. I, I agree. I think that we're we're going to see a lot more of that, and I think that we'll we'll see the insurance uh, industry step up to the sharing economy. I've been talking to almost every insurance company in Europe about. Uh, about how to, you know, how they were going to deal with the sharing economy and how we could also use reputation to enable better pricing and better risk premiums. And they, they all have an agenda to work in the sharing economy. They understand that it's the, you know, it's, an, it's a new way to operate, a new way to, to open new business opportunities for themselves. Uh, new things that we want to insure because we want to rent out our things or because we want to sell new things and because, you know, they're new ways of working or new operating and operating uh, opportunities and, and they all want to participate. Some of them will create uh, new products specific for the sharing economy, mm -hmm. some of them will adapt their products to enable the sharing economy as you, as you just mentioned. I, I don't think that anyone has the right answer yet, uh, but all of them are working in that direction. It might take two years, it might take five years, uh, we might start to see the, in the next six months where we will start to see uh, many new products coming out from those companies for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, what, yeah, what, 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 what will happen uh, then. And, 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 and also about trust, because I uh, saw an interview with the guy from, um, I, f I forgot the name, but a, 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 a platform in the US, and he said, okay, we want to be your trusted neighbor. And he gave the example, okay, like, um, I have two children, and uh, uh, me and my girlfriend, we were looking for a babysitter, and we were at the, uh, uh, at the barbecue uh, uh, in our streets, 
uh, we have this every uh, uh, one time a year, and we talk to to, to women. We, o we we also uh, just talk to one time a year, and we talked about hey, we're looking for babysitters. She said, okay, Martijn, we know somebody, and they said, okay, Mies, come here, mm. and then said, okay, we trust you, come on, uh, uh, and then he said, okay, but in the end, the person who's who, who's making the recommendations doesn't know the whole market of babysitters. Yeah. Doesn't know is she a good babysitter. Doesn't know does yeah. she have a criminal record. Yeah. Um, but in the end, many reputation discussions are about rational decisions. But in the end, human beings are not about rational decisions. Mm. So, isn't it also possible when we're going too far in this reputation uh, story that we're also yeah going to be less nice people? So yeah, that's, that's a very good question. I mean, I, I have been thinking about this a long time, actually, for a long time. Um, uh, a couple of answers to that. So um, the the um, I think will be less nice people. It's just that we want to have more data to make better decisions, and some people might continue to make bad decisions. The key, the the expectation is that we can make at least just as good decisions as before or this, the status quo is what it is and if we can improve that by 5%, by 5%, by 50%, by 500% that's a good thing but that's the first starting point the second point is that uh, using reputation systems you might be able to eliminate some of the bad people think about the, the bad people are not like 50% of the people they are 0.1% of the people if you can filter those or you can filter 80% uh, of those you bring that 0.1% to 0.02%, right? You're, you're eliminating risk just by doing that. Uh, and secondly, the and answering the second part of the question is about who should provide that reputation. Here you're talking about your friend just recommended one person, right? Uh, there is a challenge, uh, which I think is, is going to be a major challenge in the next few years, which is artificial intelligence. And it is that today we trust this friend of a friend to recommend a babysitter. Uh, in the future, we're going to be trusting artificial intelligence, right? And we're going to be trusting AIs to choose that person for us, or to curate people out of the system. That which is actually, could, you could argue, is actually even worse, right? Today, uh, people who get less than 4.2 stars on Uber, uh, Uber doesn't allow them to drive anymore. So you are eliminating people's ability to work just based on a few negative reviews from a few people who might have been angry or drunk or whatever, right? So. Um, so those reputation systems can have a significant impact in people's lives and the question is how much of that should be human, how much of that should be, um, should be uh, like computerized. And here the, the key example is when you go to eBay you can have uh, 78 uh, reviews. If you have 77 reviews which are positive and one which is negative, uh, most people are going to check the negative. They want to know what happened there, right? And they might say, okay, well, that's fair. Well, they, they were unlucky. They didn't find each other, whatever, right? Or, oh, this guy is a really bad person or whatever, right? But you're going to look into that. Now, when you aggregate hundreds of thousands of links of reputation from many different networks, from many different signals, uh, you cannot do that. You, you are not going to spend your life reviewing Martin's reputation and his 100,000 links. It's impossible. So we'll have to rely on artificial intelligence to check that for us. Uh, and it might come to a point where it becomes less humane because maybe, you know, uh, you know, we will not let you into this office because something happened that I was not even aware of but my AI said don't open the door. And I, 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 that might be a little, little bit crazy but, you know, you, you see what I mean with or, AIs or, like, deciding for yeah. you? Or, or, or probably uh, the lock says don't, don't, don't let them in. So yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that would be the same thing, right? So, um, I, 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 I'm not saying we're, we're close to that yet, I'm just saying that when you aggregate, when those 78 reviews of eBay become, I don't know, 70,000 and then 7 million, it might come to a point where you have to make decisions differently. You cannot just hope that people are going to read that manually. And you will have to rely on algorithms, and you will have to rely on data, and you will have to rely on other types of approaches and proxies to assess people. That can make us less good people, who knows? Right? I mean, yeah. I think that history has taught us so far that when there is um, uh, better access to technology, people, most people use it properly. Most, most people, you know, use that for good, right? And when we all learn to read, we, we use reading and writing for good, for good things. And uh, some people use writing for bad things, right? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Ever, but is it better that we all can read? Yes, it's better. Um, yeah, yeah, but I also don't think that, that, that it's a bad thing, but I think it's really important to 
to uh, to uh, to keep this to keep the the discussion open. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and if, if you, I, I recently wrote a blog post about uh, challenges of reputation, and and I say that you know most challenges are moral. They're not they're not technical. Mm -hmm. uh, challenges are uh, like the the right to remove data, or the right to delete, right, or the right yeah. to forget. Um, think about the right to forget, and I think about this all the time. Uh, should you have the right to forget that negative review on eBay? You have 78 reviews, 77 were positive, one was negative. Should you have the right to delete that review? Well, technically it's very easy. You just delete mm -hmm. a line of code, or a line of in a database. Morally, or ethically, it's hard, because if we delete it, if we let you delete it, then reputation is pointless. Yeah. So, Everyone yeah. has hundred percent positive. So yeah. what's the point of reputation yeah. anymore? Yeah, but, uh, but but if I don't let you remove that, then I'm not letting you raise up again or stand up again. So we might need different approaches. Like uh, there, we might need a window of opportunity, and some things that happened more than two years ago don't count, or they count less. Yeah. So you see, it comes to a gray area, which is mostly ethical or moral, but it's not technical. Technical is yeah. easy. No, well, but uh, I think it's with, uh, with every technical evolution, say, like, with self-driving cars, yeah. from uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the technique is, is the people. Uh, but, but maybe it's also really important to, to add more context to the, uh, to the uh, reviews, uh, because yeah. uh, now it's only good or bad. Mm. Uh, but I think when you uh, add more context to it, then you also will understand what happened. That, that's what we also s always say about trading, right? I mean, uh, on Airbnb, you only have Airbnb data, which in May is mostly semantic. Uh, on eBay, you have mostly qualitative data, although you can leave text. Um, you know, on different on Uber, it's mostly just a score, right? Um, I think that the aggregation of all that data enables us to have much richer feeling of a person, and that's why we think that it will make sense for risk premiums, for credit, for insurance, etc. Uh, can you change the reputation systems of every single uh, like marketplace one by one? It would probably not be practical. Uh, would you want to have to write every time you take an Uber to write the whole review of what happened and where you are going? No, it's just enough with saying five stars. It's, it's, it's enough. Uh, would you want your, you know, if you have been working at Microsoft for the last seven years, do you want your boss to give you a good review? Yes, you want a good long review. Yeah. But then this is what this guy did. He was very good, very good team worker, etc., etc., etc. Right. So I think that depending on the transaction, you want to have more or less context because because things matter more or less. Yeah. And I think it would not be realistic to expect to have a one reputation system that works for everything. Yeah. Uh, realistic is to think that uh, some things matter more than others, and we have to give more weight to those things that matter more. Yeah. And about transparency, because I think many reputation systems on platforms they are not transparent. Because same like with Uber, you have no idea uh, if they're only using uh, mm. the, the stars uh, uh, of uh, of passengers, or, or or also they maybe are tracking the GPS and then say, okay, you you yeah. you're you driving too fast, so we're going to give you two percent mm. uh, uh, less better uh, reviews. So, so uh, how transparent uh, are you with Freddy about uh, the, the the scores? So the, there are two things that we are doing. So one of them is we are giving people uh, an understanding of how the scores work, uh, but we don't give people the weighting. This is similar to Google uh, with PageRank, right? It's like we tell you what the PageRank algorithm looks like, but we don't tell you exactly how to trick it because otherwise everyone is trying to fix their SEOs to be on top, right? So that, that's one thing, and I don't think it would be good to make it completely... Uh, it, it does have to be a black box, but it doesn't have to be completely white, and this is the algorithm, and you can download it here. Uh, it has to be, you have to give guidelines of how you're measuring things, so that people know how things are affecting them, but without giving them the reasons or the ways to trick the system. And then secondly, uh, we are, from the transparency point of view, uh, everything that happens on Trady today uh, also happens on blockchain. We are creating a fingerprint of every reputation that we gather and putting it into blockchain. What that means is that uh, if Trady eventually, you know, uh, disappears or, uh, or becomes evil or whatever, you can delete your reputation from Trady and it's fine because you keep your reputation on the blockchain as a fingerprint. That, uh, you know, what we're trying to do with that, I mean, it doesn't really have any uh, economic or financial reason for us to do that, and there's no reason for us to do that at all, really. Um, but other than proving to the people who work with us that we care about their data, that we care about their reputation, that, that we care about them owning their own reputation 
and having control over that data. And, and I think that that's a way to prove transparency, right? It's like we're writing this into the system and you can have a fingerprint of that on a public ledger that shows that you actually did that and whether we exist or not is irrelevant. You are, you, it, it, this is your reputation, you own it. And it's not in our servers, in some database hidden somewhere, right? Yeah, okay. And, and, and um, at what way are you making money? Because uh, people, that, uh, they can use the service for free. Uh, but you also got uh, quite some expense, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and also some investors to say, okay, uh, in the end we also want to have some uh, some return. So so far we have not made any any revenues. We have not uh, uh, received any money uh, from customers yet. Uh, this year, I think we're going to be releasing a couple of products in the mostly in the insurance sector, as I mentioned earlier, uh, whereby people. Uh, will proactively use their reputation to reduce their risk premiums. I think that is, that's going to be really exciting. Um, again, it's going to be. It's not going to be something like, as I said, uh, we sell people's data or anything. It's quite the opposite. It will be you going to this place and saying, oh, I want an insurance. Oh, because I have a trade reputation. Here, here it goes. I get the cheaper price. Uh, I think that that's going to be very exciting. I think it's going to be the first time in probably in history of data that the, at, at that level kind of thing. That, that we can use our own identity, our own reputation for our own benefits, not just to get uh, advertisements of nappies or advertisements of this or that because I visited the website. This is using your own data in a proactive manner, not reactive, for something that you really care about, you deeply care about and how you can benefit from that reputation because you are a good person, because you have behaved positively in all these previous transactions. So that's how, how we expect to make money in the future, uh, proactively, with benefit to the consumer and with a direct transaction. Okay, cool. And and and, and also because you say okay, the, the 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 consumer is in control. So because in the end uh, you are taking uh, uh, much data, uh, almost uh, as much as possible, or, or mm. as, as as long as it's 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 it's, it's relevant. But the same way, what you also say with depends on on the transaction how much uh, review you want to give. It also depends on the, on the, on the transactions how much rotation you want to share. So good point. Uh, very good point. And I, I think this is similar to what I mentioned earlier about showing your your like platinum card to the lounge in the airport, right? You go to you want to go to the Harvard University uh, library and you have to show your Harvard card. You go to the airport, you have to show your platinum card. You go to the alcohol store, you have to show that you are twenty one years old, right? For different things, you have to show different levels of reputation. And it's not more or less, it's different. In one, I am the VIP guy of the lounge of the airport, and the other one, I'm a Harvard student, and that's, that's why I can go into the library. So completely different things. Yeah. And I, that's the way we're thinking about reputation. Reputation is about you having control over what pieces of reputation need to be shared for this particular service or benefit. And it's not about sharing everything. It's about, uh, look, it makes sense that this insurance company, they want to have access to my previous track record of Airbnb, etc., because this is home insurance. Okay, yeah. it just makes sense, yeah. right? That they would have access to that rec track record, and yeah. then you give access to that. It's, yeah. a, it's about being proactive. It's about being in control. It's about uh, using your data in ways that you care about to achieve things that you that you want, right? Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, when you create a profile on Trade, you also uh, uh, can or have, or have to upload uh, your 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 idea, your your uh, ID. Oh, that's something we are doing recently, actually. Uh, it's just uh, many marketplaces were asking that, uh, asking us to do that. So uh, we're now starting to do what we have been doing for a while: uh, face recognition and machine machine learning recognition. And uh, we're now launching a new product uh, with deep learning capabilities, uh, whereby you know we'll be recognizing your face and comparing that with that of your ID and to your social networks. And then we can say, yeah, you're Martin, this is your face, you're a live person, we can see your face right now. We see that the passport person is the same person, so you, we do the mm -hmm. matching. And then we say, oh, that's the same person on Facebook, same person on LinkedIn, yeah, it looks like you're the same person everywhere, yeah. so you're consistent. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's so has to do uh, with... So, you're not, so you know, you're not really checking the idea, you're just uh, adjust your, you're making the, the match uh, with, with other platforms based on the picture. Yeah, it's just because the many marketplaces were asking us to do that. They were saying that they cared about the offline identity, not only the online identity. And the offline identity you know, is mostly provided by government IDs and by, and by you know, your own face and who you are. 
So that's something we're be yeah, we're adding um, more recently. I think it will be the launch soon. Hopefully before okay. you release this video <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It will be, it will be announced soon anyway. So. No, but uh, yeah, I think it's very interesting. But uh, but in the end, uh, when you're really good at Photoshop, can you fake it? Uh, actually not, and that, that's one of the key things we have been working on. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna go later to see a demo with with uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, we are making sure that you have to prove that you are alive, that you have to prove that I mean, we are doing many things to, to. It's not a picture. This is this won't okay. goes beyond pictures. Okay. This is like what I mentioned earlier about you know, you know these typical chapters of CSI where they have this pixelated image and they say, oh, zoom there. And they zoom and they see more information. It's like, how mm -hmm. did they do that, mm -hmm. right? You cannot mm -hmm. zoom and have less pixels, right? And have more pixels. We're actually doing something around that cool. to actually improve on on what the entropy would tell you about one single picture. It's actually very exciting. I think we're okay. going to release something very cool and, and that should be useful to for most marketplaces, we expect. And uh, it's also possible because uh, uh, you got the, the different customers, uh, you got the, uh, the consumers, they can make a profile, but you could also have the platforms or the marketplaces uh, that use your, I, I guess, an, yeah. an, an, an API? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so the, the, mar the most consumers come through the, through the marketplaces, through the API. Uh, so uh, the customers are our users, but the go-to-market is through marketplaces who are the ones who need reputation for their own marketplace. So that's why we have to work with both, right? Yeah, yeah. But in the end, I guess maybe also like uh, with the ID check, there, there are many platforms who really are desperate uh, thinking about, okay, how can I arrange this? So maybe this also could be a, oh, yeah, yeah. a product where you can also get oh, yeah, some totally. revenue. Totally, yeah. totally. I mean, we'll probably charge a little bit for that because it's, it's a very yeah, sure. complex product. And there are other platforms like you know, other companies like Jumio, they do identity verification, but they're more oriented to large uh, sets of customers. Like you need to do at least, I think with Jumio, for example, you need to do at least 3,000 passports per month. And many companies don't have that level of volume. And no. we're going to just let anyone, just, you want to do seven, you do seven. You want to do 25, you do 25, right? So, yeah. so that will enable more people to go into this kind of uh, services to their, to provide these services to their customers. Um, and yeah, we'll say we, we might charge for that. I mean, for us, that's not really the the end game. Mm -hmm. The end game has more to do with uh, creating that reputation standard. And in order to get a reputation standard, you want to be very ubiquitous. You want to be in every marketplace and everyone using trading. So that's more of the of the end yeah. game. Um, you know, whether you know, we'll see what happens with that product. We, we haven't launched it yet, so we don't know. We don't have answers. We don't, we don't have okay. numbers to. To show you, no, we'll sure. see. Yeah. I will yeah. show you a demo later. It's yeah. Cool. yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's very interesting. And 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 um, what I really like about trading and also about your story is is is, is, is many reputation discussions. There are about reputation on on, on sharing economy platforms or on marketplaces. But what you're doing is taking reputation much broader, also to the offline world, but also to totally. different segments, like also with with, with uh, credit Finance. scores and that kind of thing. Mm. So I think it's really interesting. I think. Uh, it's quite a long way because it's 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 really new, uh, but I think it's 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 a really exciting one. I think that you know if we if we just stay within the sharing economy, it would be too small. Um, I think that we have you know there isn't much. I mean, when you think about it, if the largest marketplace in the world is Airbnb, but Airbnb only has like 10 million users, right? And we have I mean, hundreds of millions of people online, so you would be missing out on most yeah. people. So so we think that we have to take this much farther into traditional services that people are using every day. Like yeah, cool. And, and, and now what, what are your main challenges uh, for, for the next... Uh main challenges? Well, to, <coughs> I guess that it is to prove uh, that reputation can actually be used for what I what you just said, right? For the risk premiums. Can, can it really prove that people who didn't have a good credit score, that they have a good reputation score on trade, are good customers, are good uh, people to ensure they are low risk? Uh, if we can prove that, I think we'll have done a very significant impact. Yeah. And then that's, we have to prove that in the next, I hope we will prove that in the next couple of months, actually, in the next six months or so. Yeah, because you also got the challenge because in the end uh, uh, I talked to quite some, some startups and, 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 and many uh, who also got quite some, some investments and they say, okay, our, our big challenge is, okay, we, we know we got money for the next six or twelve months. <coughs> so that's, that's also, especially mm -hmm. also for, for one of the founders. We're, we're fine, I think parts. we're fine actually. We're, we're fine with money, we have very patient investors, they understand that what we're doing is very difficult. 
Yeah. And that is not like you sell ducky toys and you sell 10 ducky toys and that's better than yesterday when you sold 8 ducky toys and tomorrow you have to sell 12. Yeah. Uh, this is more difficult than that. It doesn't have a clear uh, P&L of revenue and cost and you're making money or not making money. It's about building a platform uh, to enable the future of the economic graph. Yeah. And you know, it just has all the types of challenges. And that money is not really a challenge for us right now. It's mostly proof that yeah. it works in the way that people should benefit from. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you thanks. For, yeah, it's great. Thanks, thanks for the interview. Nice. Good luck with everything. I think it's really exciting. And I'll be in Madrid. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs>